Hey everyone, just a few more minutes and then we're going to get started. Just going to wait for a few more viewers to join in uh, and then we're going to dive right in here in just a moment. Okay, we're going to wait one more minute here, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you're just joining in now, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're just waiting on a few more viewers to join in, and then we're going to go ahead and dive into the presentation. Thanks so much for joining in. Okay, it's about two minutes after. We're gonna go ahead and get started right now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for Clear Estimates in Practice. My name is Michael. I'm with the customer success team here at Clear Estimates, and we're gonna be walking through a simple kitchen estimate today. Um, if you've joined us for this web series before, some of this might be a little bit of recap for you. This series is all about showing you how you can use Clear Estimates to estimate different types of projects. Uh, now, in the past, we've done walkthroughs like this for bedrooms, for bathrooms, for decks. Uh, and in this episode, we're going to walk through a simple kitchen remodel using clear estimates. So for those of you who are just getting started, this should be a really great introduction to clear estimates overall. And if you've been with us a while, this should be a nice refresh on how to use the system for this type of bid. Um, some quick housekeeping first. We are going to be covering a lot in a short time today, but uh, we will have some time for Q&A right at the end of the presentation. So as you go along, you can add in your questions using that chat feature over on the right side of your screen. If anything does come to mind, uh, just send in your questions and we'll be getting to as many of those as we can right at the end. Uh, also, the presentation is being recorded. So if you miss anything or if you have to duck out, don't worry, because all attendees are going to get an email with a recording link uh, after the presentation. And this will also be available on our YouTube channel for your reference. Now, real quick, if you're having any issues with the presentation quality, if the screen seems blurry or the connection just seems slow, uh, there's going to be an, uh, sort of a gear icon in the bottom right corner of your screen. You can use that to adjust the quality. If you have any issues with sound or anything like that, just try to refresh your browser. Usually that'll clear up any issues. Um, and by the way, we will be doing more of these presentations. So if you have suggestions on topics you'd like to see covered or types of jobs you'd like to see estimated, uh, just go ahead and add those in the chat. Now, since a lot of you are just getting started, we do like to start these off with a little bit of quick background, and then we're going to get into a few of the basics, so setting up your account and getting ready for your first estimate. Uh, from there, we're going to estimate our kitchen. Uh, we're going to show you how to set up the project, and then we're going to talk about where to find kitchen-related pricing in the library of costs. Now, there's no shortage of different options for kitchens in Clear Estimates, and since every kitchen is going to be a little bit different, we want to show you first how to browse through the library of costs and find those um, different types of parts and how to add those into your project. Uh, after that, we're going to complete our example estimate using one of the pre-built kitchen templates so you can get an idea of how templates work and what kind of kitchen templates are available in your account. From there, we're going to talk about setting up the contract, we're gonna finalize the estimate, and then we're gonna send out your proposal. And then, like I said, we will have some time for Q&A right at the end. So let's go ahead and dive into a little bit of background. So what does Clear Estimates do? You know, it's an estimating software specifically for contractors. It's built to estimate residential remodeling work. So things like bath bathrooms and bedrooms and additions, uh, and of course, kitchens. 
So it includes pricing for things like cabinets and painting, appliances, just about anything you're gonna need in a kitchen estimate. We're gonna have that pricing included and it's all gonna be locally sourced. Um, so what are the benefits? Well, if you estimate remodeling work like this, you're well aware of just how time consuming of a process this can be. So what Clear Estimates does is it makes that process much faster by offering you an exhaustive library of remodeling cost data covering all of these different applications. And what's so great about these costs is that we're not looking at a national average. You're actually looking at specific pricing from your area of the country. When you log in, you're going to be setting up material costs for your area, and you can use those costs to build up your estimate. Um, and those costs are going to be updated automatically. So it makes it really easy to put together an estimate using the most accurate numbers. Now, once you assemble your estimate, Clear Estimates will automatically generate a professional proposal that you're able to send right to your homeowner from the tool. Uh, so it's really built to streamline your whole estimating process and make that experience much smoother for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm just going to pop over here into Clear Estimates. And let's talk about the layout of Clear Estimates itself. Now, if you're first logging in for the very first time, you should be seeing something that looks just like this. Uh, this is the home page. Here on the home page, you're going to see a series of sample projects. And if you've already been using the tool, you'll see your five most recent uh, estimates listed here on the home page. So the home page is kind of your dashboard for recent estimates you've worked on. Uh, this is also where we can start a new project. Um, when you're looking at the software, you're going to notice there's going to be a project title and a customer name up here in the top left. Uh, this is which project is open. And then below that, you're going to see this series of four buttons here. So home page, which we're on right now. Customers is where we're going to kind of manage our backlog of estimates. Uh, all of the customers we've worked with and all of their estimates are going to be found here. Uh, the projects page, we're going to spend a lot of time there today. This is where we're actually going to build the estimate uh, and kind of manage the project while it's underway. The reports tool is where you're going to export proposals. It's where you're going to set up contract language. It's also where you can create and view invoices for a specific project. So you want to think about these four buttons as they relate to a specific estimate we're working on. Uh, over here in the top right, you're going to see these other four blue buttons here, parts, templates, options, and update. And you can think of these as account settings. So parts is where you're going to manage the settings for your parts. Uh, templates is where you're going to manage your template settings. This is also where you can create new templates. The options tool is where we're going to do things like manage the subscription. We're going to uh, manage report settings. This is where we can set up integrations. Uh, and then the update tool over here, this is where we can use pricing from a different location if we choose. So you're not locked into the pricing you use when you sign up. You can always switch it there. Now, if you've just logged in for the first time today, you might be a little tempted to go ahead and click new project and get started on your new project right away. Uh, always recommend we take a look at a few of our account settings first, just to make sure everything looks good. So to do that, we're gonna come up here to the options tool, top right corner, you'll see it looks like this checkbox. That's gonna take us right to the company data page. So this is where we are going to fill out all of the information about our company. So this information, we wanna fill in as much of this as possible. All of these details are gonna show up at the top of the reports for our client. So always a good idea to fill in as much of this as possible. Now, a lot of this should have been filled in when you signed up, but if anything's missing, just go through and fill it out. So we see my company name here, street address, city, state, and zip. Uh, and then this is a great place to add in something like a license number. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. And then down below is going to be your phone and email contact info. If you do have any additional phone numbers or emails you'd like listed on the top of the proposal, just go ahead and add them there. Uh, and then we also can set up a company logo up here at the top. So I'm just going to click the set company logo button. I do have a logo I'm going to go ahead and upload. I'm going to choose that logo. You'll see it's kind of kind of staged the logo right here. It just looks like a little document. Keep in mind you have um, options if you want to change how that's oriented on the proposal. I'm going to put mine center and I'm going to make it a small size logo. The last step here is just to scroll down to the bottom right and click save. That's going to finish importing your logo and now we see my logo files up here. So next I want to just take a quick look at the labor rates. So the second option down here on the left is your labor rate editor. Um, so when you sign up, your account's going to be preloaded with a number of locally sourced labor rates. So these are already going to be preloaded for you when you sign up. Um, so you're going to see these are kind of pre-markup, pre pre-tax rates covering all of the different trades you might expect to need. 
Um, so we're going to see all of these listed here. Now, it's a good idea to kind of look through the rates, make sure if you want to make any adjustments, you go ahead and do so. I recommend don't delete any of these labor rates. They're all tied back to the different parts that are in your library of costs. So it can cause issues if you delete these. So I always just recommend click into the rate column, make adjustments, and then you can save changes after you're done with that. And if you would like to take a look at rates from other locations, just go here up, uh, I'm sorry, just go up here to the top. You're going to see this link for click here to see recommended labor rates. Uh, so you can always take a look at rates from other areas there as well. So with all that in mind, once we've kind of gone through our account settings, then we're all set to come back here to home and we can go ahead and get started on our project. So when we're ready to do that, we're just going to go ahead and click this new project button. And that's going to pull up this screen and this screen is just going to ask for some information about our client. So first name, last name, email, project title, and the description. So I'm just going to call this John Homeowner. We'll give him kind of a dummy email here. We'll just call him john at email.com. Then I'm going to give it a project title. In this case, I'm just going to say kitchen remodel. Project description is a good place for a little more info. So I'm just going to say kitchen remodel, 111 square feet. We're going to say average grade. So then I'm going to click continue and it's going to ask me a question. It's going to say, will this project contain multiple components? Now what components are, um, they're used to organize your estimate by room or by phase. So it might not be uncommon to have, let's say, a kitchen and a bath in the same project. And this allows you to just keep those different scopes of work organized on the proposal for your client. We're not going to get into components too much today. We're just going to kind of keep this uh, very simple remodel estimate for a kitchen. Uh, there is support material on components. If you're interested in learning about them, just go to your support drop down at the top and click support information. You can search components and find a number of guides on that. Uh, in this case, we're just going to keep it simple and say, no, not right now. And we're going to click continue. So that's going to take us over to our projects page. Now, like I said in the beginning, this is where we're going to spend the majority of our time in clear estimates. This is where we're going to build up our estimate and kind of manage the project. So really quick, let's just go through a quick layout of the projects page here. So up here in the top left, we're seeing our project title. If you want to click into this box, you can adjust the title if you'd like. Uh, same thing with the description just below. If you want to adjust that, we can just click into this box and make adjustments. Over on the right side, you're going to see a handful of tools that you're going to use when you're creating your estimate. Now, in the more drop down, we're going to find options to make copies of our project. We can archive it when we're done. And this is a brand new feature we just added in yesterday. In fact, you can now save projects as templates in your account. Uh, we sent out an email about that. Uh, watch out in your inbox for info about that. This is also where we can create and view invoices. And then down at the bottom, we can integrate clearing and so on. Just to the left of that, you're going to see the send a customer option. This is how you're going to send the proposal out to your client once it's done. Uh, before we do that, always a great idea to preview the estimate. We can do that by clicking this eyeball. It says view report here. Uh, you can print it to PDF. You can also save that to MS Word if you'd like. And then export project is where we can print just records or details from our project for our own purposes. Can print those to PDF, Word, or Excel. Down at the bottom, we can um, send information over to QuickBooks after our integration is set up. And if you're a pro user, this is also where you can export to Builder Trend. Just below that is what I like to call the project parts interface. This is where we're going to search for parts to add, for, add to our estimate. Now we can search them just by name. We can type in a search term. Uh, we can also click Browse Part Library, which is essentially just like opening up a catalog of parts. Um, so this is how you can kind of browse through the full catalog of costs. If we want to create our own part. We can do that using Create Custom Part. And then Add Template is how we can add in a list of parts, essentially a pre-built estimate designed to get you 80 or 90% of the way there. And then you can fine tune it for your project needs. Um, so let's back up here for just a second and talk about what a part is. A part is any line item that's in your estimate. So anything that describes a task and includes a cost. So this could be something like hanging some drywall, um, installing some wall framing, maybe you're swapping out a fixture. Uh, any specific task with a material or labor cost associated with it can be thought of as a single part. So we're going to have this library of 13 or so thousand parts that you can choose from when you're building your estimate. And then, like I said, we're going to have around 200 different templates already included in your account that will give you a great starting point. Now, as we add parts to our estimate, we're going to see them here in the project parts list. And then down below here, we're going to have our markup tools. So keep in mind, all of the part costs in clear estimates don't include markup. They don't include any tax. Uh, so this is how you're going to account for your own profit and overhead. 
It's all based on percentage. So we can add in a material percentage, a labor percentage, and those percentages are just going to get tacked onto the project cost and included in the cost to our client. Just below that's going to be subsections of the estimate. So we were talking about components in the beginning. Not going to get into that too much today. Um, there's also alternates tool, which is similar, but this is used for showing options on the proposal. And it's also used for creating um, sort of standalone change orders. Now, we will be getting into alternates a little bit today. Um, so we'll cover that in a short while here. And then down at the very bottom is going to be miscellaneous items. This is how you're going to account for your sales tax. Uh, as well as any kind of discount or extra percentage you want to add on top of your project cost, you could set that up as a miscellaneous item. So let's just quickly talk about the process of adding a single item to the estimate. Um, so what I'm going to do, we could search for a part by term, but I'm going to go ahead and click Browse Part Library right here. And that's going to pull up this window, which is where we're going to browse the, the part library. Now, there's going to be some suggested searches for you down here, but we really just want to focus on these blue drop downs up here at the top. Um, important to understand that the library is all categorized. It's sorted by category. So if we click this category drop down here, we're seeing all of the categories of parts included in Clear Estimate. So it's all organized on a very basic level by scope of work. Um, so we're starting off with project prep, then we're getting into things like demolition. And then further down, we're getting into things like concrete framing, uh, excavation work, doors, windows, skylights, uh, and so on. So everything is going to be sorted by category here. Um, so just to give you an example of how this works, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Project Preparation here. When I click that category, it's going to show me all of the pricing that's included in that category down here below. So we're looking at part description, category, cost per unit, and it's going to have some, uh, some, some labor hours information here, which is used to calculate your labor cost. Um, now, there's a lot of pricing in here. So to get a little more specific, I'm going to use the subcategory dropdown and get more specific in my search. Now, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this option here for surface protection. And now we're seeing it's narrowed down the search results here. So we're just looking at a handful of items. Uh, so in this scenario, we're just going to pretend there's around 70 square feet or so, or so uh, around the perimeter of my kitchen that I want to cover up with some plastic. So maybe they've got some nice carpeting around the perimeter of this kitchen. We just want to make sure that's protected from debris. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this first part here, cover contents with plastic sheeting. Uh, when I want to uh, add a part to my estimate, I'm just going to go ahead and click the part description. It's going to pull up this preview where we can tell Clear Estimates how much of the part we need. Um, so in this case, all I'd really need to do is just click into this blue quantity bar and type in 70 square feet. It's going to price out the part, and then I can go ahead and click Add Part to add it to my estimate. If you're curious how it's arriving at the costs here, you can kind of see that information here in this window. It's going to tell you your material cost per unit. So that in this case, it's a cost per square foot of $0.10. Cents. Um, so it's giving us around $0.10 cents per square foot to put down this plastic sheeting. And then down below, we have an install time per square foot. So this is essentially just telling us how much time we're going to expect to spend putting down each square foot of this plastic sheeting. So it shouldn't take us very long, just a fraction of an hour here. So it's going to multiply this number by our part quantity and again by our labor rate. Now keep in mind you can adjust any of this if you'd like. So you can click into these columns and adjust this information. You can even choose a different labor rate if you'd like. Um, but really all we needed to do because the costs are already included is just type in our square footage and then add the part to the estimate. So let's just quickly close out and take a look at what we did. So we added the single part to the estimate, cover contents with plastic sheeting. We see our quantity of units here, the category, the cost information. And if we wanted to adjust anything about the part further, we can always open it up using this pencil. If you'd like to delete a part, you can do that using this trash can here. So with that all in mind, before we really dive too deep into this estimate, I do just want to talk about, in general, where to find kitchen-related pricing in your library of costs. So I'm going to click back open into Browse Part Library here. And let's just talk about some of the common things you might need in a kitchen and where to find them. So I'm going to go ahead and click this category dropdown. And then let's just start with demolition. Now, in some cases in a kitchen, you might need to do some framing demolition. If you do, you can go ahead and click Framing Demo. And then there's going to be options for joist demolition, sheathing demolition, framing demolition. Uh, more common, you're going to probably find more of your demolition costs here in general demolition. Um, so this is where you're going to find a lot of different options. So if we scroll down in the subcategory list here, in general interior demolition, we can find things like trim demolition or bookcases and shelving demo. 
Um, that's another thing to keep in mind. So under each category of parts, there are going to be subcategories to get more specific. And then a lot of times under your subcategories, you can use these part groups to get even more specific in your search. So if I just want to look at demolish interior trim items, here we're looking at pricing for removing baseboard, quarter round, crown molding, etc. Uh, elsewhere in this same category, we're going to find things like cabinet and countertop demolition. So here's cabinet and countertop demo. Same idea, we can sort by demolish cabinets, demolish countertops, insulation, and so on. Um, for something like drywall, that's almost universally going to be in the coverings category. Now, this is another thing I should mention. If you want to filter your subcategories, you can kind of do that just by clicking into the subcategory box here and type in a term. So that's going to help us kind of filter the subcategories. You could do the same thing with main categories. So here we're seeing options for ceiling covering demolition and wall covering demolition. So for something like wall drywall, we're going to head into wall covering demolition. Again, we're in for general demolition. And then we're sorting by wall covering demo. And then if we use this part group dropdown, we'll have options for demolishing the drywall, the wood wall covering, ceramic wall tile. If you need to demolish some ceramic wall tile, that's all going to be found here. And same idea with ceiling covering. So things like ceiling drywall, tile ceiling, wood ceiling, and so on. Systems demo is where you're going to find things like electrical demolition, HVAC demolition, plumbing demolition. So if we go into plumbing demolition, we're going to see options like removing sinks, disposers, uh, ovens, cooktops, ranges, and what have you. Uh, in HVAC demolition, if you need to, let's say, reroute some ducts or anything like that, um, you're going to find that pricing here. An electrical demo is where we're going to find things like removing fixtures, outlets, uh, fans, and what have you. So a little bit further down in the category list, we're going to find um, kind of new build items here. So we're looking at things like framing. So if you need to frame any walls or floors, you're going to find that pricing here in floor framing and wall framing. A little bit further down, we're going to see a couple of different options for windows. So wood, vinyl, or aluminum windows, all of those costs can be found in these categories. Scrolling down just a little bit further, we're going to get into the plumbing categories. Now, a lot of the items you might need in a kitchen are going to be here in 23 kitchen and laundry plumbing. Now, as we're going through this, you might be wondering, especially if you're just tuning in, why we're not adding any of these items to our project yet. So right now, because every kitchen is so different, I just want to kind of take you through the part library, show you where the, these, these different kind of costs can be found. Uh, and then we're actually going to get into building our estimate here in just a moment. So in kitchen and laundry plumbing, we're going to have subcategories for kitchen and laundry rough-in, removing existing fixtures, installing new fixtures in prepared location. Now, this is an important concept to understand when you're looking through the library. In a lot of cases, there's going to be separate items for the labor to install than there is for the material costs. Now, in most cases, those are both going to be combined in single line items, but especially in the case of kitchens, we're going to find separate costs for the installation labor than we will for the material. So further down in my list, I'm actually I'm actually going to be able to find specific material costs for things like sinks and faucets, disposers, dishwashers, ranges, cooktops, uh, wall ovens, and so on. So a little bit further down, we're going to find electrical parts. This is where if you need to install some outlets or switches, you're going to find those parts here. Uh, and this is also where you're going to find things like lighting. So recess lighting, under counter lighting, fluorescent lighting, incandescent, and what have you. Uh, just below electrical is appliances, so there's going to be um, parts for appliance rough-in, removing existing appliances, installing new appliances in prepared locations, and then further down we're going to find specific costs for refrigerators, ranges, cooktops, wall ovens, trash compactors, range hoods, dishwashers, uh, disposers, uh, and etc. Down in wall coverings and ceiling coverings, this is, oops, sorry about that. Down in wall coverings and ceiling coverings, this is where we're going to find new installation of drywall. Uh, this is also where we're going to find labor costs for installing ceramic tile wall and the ceramic wall tile itself, uh, as well as things like paneling um, and unfinished hardboard paneling and what have you. All of those are going to be found here in 28 wall coverings. In ceiling coverings, same idea here. So we're going to see drywall. And then further down, we're going to find things like plaster and drywall repair, textures, uh, ceiling tiles, grid ceilings. In interior trim, stairs, and accessories, that's where you're going to find pricing for baseboard or crown molding. 
And then in cabinets and countertops, this is where we're going to find labor costs for installation or removal of kitchen cabinets. Uh, and then further down, we're going to see options for specific prices for different types of cabinets in premium, average, and economy grades here. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, I can find kitchen countertops. Under kitchen countertops, we can sort by laminate, solid surface, granite, marble, engineered quartz, and so on. And then lastly, any kind of painting work is generally going to be in 35 interior painting and wallpaper. And you can see all of those different costs here. So we're looking at labor for cutting in and then specific types of tasks. So painting walls with texture, paneling, uh, ceilings, ceilings with texture, and what have you. So with that all in mind, let's go ahead and start building this actual estimate. Now, to make this uh, a, little, little, a little easier for us, I put together this takeoff sheet. Um, essentially, what this means is I went through the kitchen. I went through my homeowner's property. I took all my measurements. I've got an idea of everything that I need to get priced out in this estimate. And for each task in this takeoff, I prepared my quantities and my measurements here. So it helps a lot to have your measurements all set to go when you're getting started in clear estimates. It's gonna make it a lot easier to price out all of this work. Um, so in this particular project, it's gonna be 111 square foot kitchen. It's gonna be average grade everything. Um, and then we have a good amount of work to do here. So we have some prep work, we have some demolition we need to take care of. Um, and then further down, we're gonna have some new installation of plumbing, electrical appliances, drywall. Um, we're gonna be putting in some new cabinets as well as some, some new countertops. Um, we're gonna be adding some new flooring. We're gonna be doing a little bit of painting work. And then we're gonna have some cleanup and finalization here at the end. So this is exactly what we're gonna to estimate today. We're gonna to do it using a combination of parts from the library and some of the pre-built templates here. Now, the first item here in my takeoff is in my prep work section. This is for surface protection. We've already added in here a part for 70 square foot of plastic sheeting. So that's already taken care of. Um, but this next item down here is for a set of plans. So I need to get a set of plans put together for this project. This is gonna be around an 18 to 20K project cost. So I'm gonna come back into Clear Estimates and let's go ahead and click Browse Part Library once again. I'm gonna use that drop down. same idea here. We're gonna go into Project Preparation. And then we're gonna use this middle drop down to find specific types of costs. So we need to set a plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab plans and permits. And this was gonna be about an 18 to 20K project cost. I'm gonna go ahead and click that part here. You see that that is the part I was looking for. I just need one of these. So I'm gonna add the part in. So up next, I had a building permit I need to pull. Again, I'm around a 18 to 20K project cost. I'm gonna come into my subcategory drop down in project preparation, and we're gonna go into building permit fees. And then we're gonna find an option for 18 to 20K. So right here, this should get me in the ballpark. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the part into my estimate. And then lastly, I have some travel costs I'd like to pass on to the homeowner here. Um, now we do have parts in the library for travel charge. So we could just search the library right now for a travel charge part. Uh, but I think it's a good opportunity to show you how you can create your own line item. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that using create custom part right here. Now, when we do that, it's gonna ask us for a few pieces of information about the part, the category, the description, and some information about the cost. And that's all it's gonna need. And we can very quickly add in our own line item. <clears throat> So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in project preparation. We're gonna call this travel cost. And we can add this as either a material or a labor cost. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna classify this as $150 in material, and we're gonna save the part. So that's gonna add it right to my estimates. So you can see how quickly we were able to add that. I notice this is at the top of my list. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down to the bottom. Keep in mind within any specific category, you can reorder parts. And then if you want parts sorted in with parts from other categories, you can always adjust the category as well. Um, so that knocks out all of our prep work. Really quick before we get too much deeper, let's just take a quick look at the proposal so far. It's just always a good idea to get an idea of what the proposal looks like. Um, so that way, while we're building the estimate, we know what we'd like to adjust and if we'd like to make any changes. Uh, so I did that by just clicking view report and print to PDF. And what that does is it's gonna pull up the document that we're eventually gonna be sending to our homeowner here. So here is the proposal. We see I've put my logo already at the top. Uh, I see my company's information up here in my submitted by, and here is my submitted to with my customer's information. I'd like to add his address in here, so I'm going to do that here shortly. 
Uh, we also have some example contract language. So this is just an example. It's meant to be tailored to your needs. So you're going to add in your own contract language to appear here at the top of the document. So a little later in the presentation, we'll get into how to do that. And then down here, we see the items I've added so far. And we see that even though the only thing we really typed in was the travel cost, everything else has already been added in and populated with a sentence of text that my homeowner can understand. So all we needed to do was find those parts and add in our quantities. And it's given us a project cost thus far. And of course, at the bottom is a nice place my client can sign the agreement. But we have a lot more work to do here. So we're going to pop into the projects page once again, and then what we're gonna do is just go ahead and finish out this kitchen estimate using this takeoff. Now we've got a lot of work left to do. We've got a good amount of demo, good amount of plumbing work to handle, as well as appliances, drywall, uh, counters and cabinets and such. So to make this a little bit quicker, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the rest of this estimate using one of our pre-built templates here. So I'm gonna do that by clicking add templates right here. That's gonna pull up this window where we can browse for different templates to add into the project. Now, similar to parts, templates are also categorized. So we can click this drop down here and we're seeing all of these different categories of templates. So you're looking at around 200 different templates uh, for common jobs. So we're looking at templates for additions, bathrooms, demolition, decking, kitchens, and plenty of other types of remodels below. So I'm gonna go ahead and click kitchens. and let's take a look at the types of templates that are available when you're doing a kitchen project. So I'm gonna use this middle drop down and find specific templates. Now, a lot of these are gonna be replacement work. So we're looking at cabinet replacement templates, um, ceramic tile backsplash replacement, cooktop replacement, countertop replacement, a variety of those available to you. Uh, dishwasher replacement, cooktop replacement, garbage disposal re uh, replacement, uh, kitchen range, and so on. And then down here, we're going to see brand new kitchen templates. So these are complete new build kitchens in economy average or premium grade. A little bit below that, we're going to see remodel templates. So economy average, premium, and then there's even more remodel templates. And then it's going to end up with even more replacement work templates. So uh, always a good idea to take a look at what templates are available to you. Uh, in this case, we're doing kind of an average gr uh, grade kitchen remodel, pretty standard here. I'm going to go ahead and use kitchen remodel average grade. Uh, when we select the template, it's going to go ahead and populate all of the parts that make up this template down here below. So we're looking at all of these different parts. And what it's going to do is it's going to try to cover as much ground as possible. It's going to be a whole list of suggested parts, commonly needed tasks in a kitchen remodel, uh, all set to be priced out all at once. Now, again, a template's going to be a starting point to your estimate. It's not going to be a situation where we're just going to grab this template and add it as is to the project. We do want to fine tune this to our specific project needs. Um, what's great about all of the template parts, though, is that all of these parts have formulas attached to them that tie back to this number up here in the top right. So this is our template quantity. And what that allows us to do is just type in the footprint square footage of the kitchen. In this case, it's 111 square feet, and then calculate quantities. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us this starting point. It's going to uh, determine the the suggested quantities for all of these different parts. So it's going to populate quantities. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go through all of the parts in this template. We're going to compare it to what we have here in our takeoff. And we're just going to make any adjustments as needed to really dial this in. So with that all in mind, let's go ahead and start uh, working on this demolition section of my takeoff with the help of this template. So I've got a good amount of demo to do. We've got some drywall coming off the ceiling as well as the wall. So for the ceiling drywall, I need to remove 111 square feet of ceiling drywall. So let's see what we've got in the template for that. So the very first item in the template is remove gypsum drywall from ceiling and it's priced it out at 111 square feet. So that's just what I need. So that's done. So next we're gonna look at the wall drywall. We have 255 square feet of wall drywall that we need to remove. Um, and third, uh, third item down here is remove gypsum drywall from wall. We're looking at 255 square feet for that. So that's correct. So next I have some base and wall cabinets to come out. I have 16 linear feet of base cabinets to remove as well as 12 linear feet of wall cabinets. So let's start with the base cabinets and see what we've got in here for base cabinets. And I actually see this part here, remove kitchen cabinets, base or wall. So this is why it's important to always kind of read the part description and they're gonna give you an idea of what's included in the part. And in this case, it's telling us that this, this part will price out either the base or the wall cabinets. And it's given us 29 linear feet. So if I look at my takeoff, I have 16 linear feet of base cabinet and 12 linear feet of wall cabinet. So around 28 linear feet in total. 
So I'm just going to come back into my template and we're just going to adjust this quantity here by clicking into the quantity column and we're going to change this over to 28 linear feet. So that way it's accurate and it makes sense with what I have here in my takeoff. So next I have some countertops that I need to remove. We have 17 linear feet of countertops. And here is a part for remove laminate countertop and it's got it at 13 linear feet. So same idea here. I'm just going to click into the quantity column and adjust this so it matches the work I need to do. So next we have some vinyl sheet flooring. I have 81 square feet of vinyl sheet flooring that are coming out of the kitchen. So let's see what we've got for that. Second item down here is remove sheet flooring and it's 81 square, or I'm sorry, it's priced it out at 83 square feet. So we're just gonna go ahead and adjust this one as well over to 81. So it was close, but not quite. So we just wanted to adjust that to really dial it in and match what we have in our list of tasks here. So next I have a kitchen sink and faucet set that needed to come out. Uh, let's see what we've got here in general demolition for that. I always like to focus on the category column here when we're looking through template parts. Uh, it helps us to just kind of find our parts that we need quickly because we'll know what category they're in and then we can kind of use that to figure out where we're at here. Um, and so there's nothing in general demo for the sink and faucet removal, but here is a part in kitchen and laundry plumbing for sink and faucet removal. So one of these accounts for both of those tasks here and that's all set to go. So next we have a dishwasher that's coming out. Let's see if we've got anything, and yes we do. So this item right here is for remove dishwasher. I just need to take out one of those, so that's all set. Next we have a garbage disposer that needs to come out. Let's see what we've got for a disposer. Here is remove disposer, and I have one of those, so that's what I need. And we, then we we're going to have a gas range that needs to get removed. So let's see what we've got for a gas range. We do have that as well in the template. Now, if there was ever uh, something that wasn't included in the template, it's not a problem because after we add this template, then we're going to be able to go into the library and choose a different item that we need to add in to compile the estimates. So typically estimates are going to be built with a combination of templates and parts from the library. In this case, everything I needed for that is already included. So next I have a refrigerator and a range hood that both need to get removed. So let's see what we've got in kitchen and laundry plumbing or general demo for that. I'm not seeing any parts related to that. So again, if there's something that's not in the template, we can come back later and make that adjustment. But actually down here in appliances, I'm looking at a part for remove refrigerator and another one for remove range hood. Um, so there we have it. That's all we're going to need there in that case. Um, so sometimes those parts are going to be sorted in with appliances. Uh, if you wanted to adjust that later, you can do that as well. So that knocks out all of our demos. So next we needed to price out some new installation work. We're going to be providing and in, in installing a new sink. Uh, as well as a faucet with the sink. And there, that's going to be a steel sink for us. So let's come back into the template and see what we've got for that. We're going to be installing a new sink and faucet. And right here in kitchen and laundry plumbing, I'm looking at three different items. I'm looking at labor to install sink and faucet in prepared location, no fixture, fixture removal, or rough-in included. So this is important to read these part descriptions because they're going to give you an idea of what's included in the part. So what this is saying is that this is the labor cost to install the sink and faucet. But then down below, we're looking at provide kitchen sink in steel. And then we're looking at provide sink faucet average grade here. So we're seeing material costs for the sink and the faucet. And then we're seeing a labor cost for install. So these three parts in the template kind of account for these two tasks here in my takeoff. So next we'll have some electrical work. We're gonna be installing some new outlets. We're gonna be installing five outlets. And then we're gonna be installing a ceiling light and a different type of outlet for our refrigerator here. So let's see what we've got in electrical. Again, I'm gonna use the category column and kind of surf down here to the electrical parts that are included in the template. So here is a part for installing new outlets in existing box. I have quantity four here. So again, we needed five. We're just gonna adjust that over to five. We also had this new ceiling light in fluorescent. Let's see what we've got for a fluorescent ceiling light. Here is 16 inch fluorescent ceiling fixture in existing box. So that's just what I need. And again, if it was a different type of lighting, it'd be no problem. We could just uncheck this part because it's not related to the project, add in everything else. And then later on, we could find a different type of lighting in the electrical category in the library. 
In this case, it is fluorescent, so we're just gonna leave this in here. And then we have this refrigerator wall outlet. Let's see what we've got in electrical for that. So nothing in electrical, but just below in appliances, we see this labor for refrigerator wall outlet, and we see that it includes a material cost. And it's just saying the, uh, the appliance is not included. Um, so I wanna use this part, but I don't like that it's in appliances. I actually want this sorted in with electrical. So that's not something I could do in the template view here. Um, but once these parts are added into the project, I'll be able to make that adjustment. So on my takeoff sheet here, I'm just gonna mark that I wanna come back and do something here with this refrigerator wall outlet. I wanna come back and adjust the category for that part. Now, if you're just tuning in now, you might be wondering why we're not adding these parts into the estimate just yet. What we're doing right now is we're just going through the template. So we're using a template to build the estimate. Before we add it to the project, we just wanna fine tune it for our project needs. Um, so that's what we're up to right now. This hasn't been added to the project yet. It's still in template mode and we're just dialing it in for the project. And then we're going to add all of these parts at once here in a bit. So moving right along, next I have some appliance install. I need to install a new disposer. It's going to be a half horsepower disposer. Let's see what we've got in appliances for that. So nothing in appliances, but I'm going to scroll back up here to kitchen and laundry plumbing and see if we've got something there. And we do. So here is installed disposer, half horsepower. So that's just what I need. And I need one of those. We also have a new gas range going in, just one of those. So let's see what we've got for a gas range right here. Here's install range, gas average. That's just what I need. Quantity one. Next, I have a, a refrigerator. Let's see what we've got for a refrigerator here. And the refrigerator might be with our appliance parts. Let's go ahead and scroll down to appliances. Here is install refrigerator. It's 22 CF. That's just what I need. And there's one of those. So that's accurate as well. So next I have a premium grade dishwasher. Now the homeowner in the previous kitchen, they didn't like the dishwasher, it didn't perform very well. Uh, so they really want to spend extra on the dishwasher and get a premium grade dishwasher for this kitchen. So let's see what we've got in the template for that. I'm guessing it's gonna be somewhere either in appliances or in kitchen and laundry plumbing. So here in kitchen and laundry plumbing, there is installed dishwasher average grade in prepared location. Now this price is way too low for what uh, dishwasher they picked out. So this is a great example of this. This doesn't really match what I need to do in this project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uncheck this part for an average grade dishwasher, since I need to come back in later and add in a premium cost for a dishwasher. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this on my takeoff as well, uh, that I wanna come back in and add this part later. And then I have a range hood. It's gonna be a 30 inch range hood. Let's see what we've got for that. Down in appliances. Here it is, install range hood. It is a 30 inch range hood in this case. So that's what I need. So next I have some new drywall install. We're gonna be installing drywall on the wall and ceiling. So for the wall, 255 square feet. And for the ceiling, it's 111 square feet, all in half inch. Uh, and then all of those parts are usually gonna be in the coverings category. So we're here in 28 wall coverings and ceiling coverings. And we're looking at a part for install half inch drywall taped and finished, and then we have install half inch drywall for the ceiling. Now for my wall, I've got 255 square feet, so that is correct. Same with the ceiling drywall, so that's all set. So what's next? Next we have some trim work. We're gonna be installing some new base molding as well as some new baseboard. We're, we need 27 linear feet of each. So let's see what we've got in the uh, template for that. I'm gonna come down here, down here to uh, 31 interior trim, stairs and accessories. This is typically where any kind of trim is gonna be found. So we're looking at install shoe, um, base shoe mold in 3 8 as well as install pine base here. And it's got 28 linear feet for each. So same idea here, I'm just gonna click into this quantity column, adjust that over to 27. And then we're able to just kind of move right along here into kitchen, uh, into kitchen cabinets and counters. So we have base cabinets going in, we have new countertop, 17 linear feet of laminate countertop going in as well as a four inch backsplash. So let's start with the base cabinets. We're gonna come back into the template and see what we've got in cabinets and countertops. 
And I'm looking at two parts for cabinet install. So I'm looking at uh, install average grade base cabinets in 13 linear feet, it's suggesting. And then I have install average grade wall cabinets in 16 linear feet, it's suggesting. Now, in this case, my client doesn't want any wall cabinets installed. They had some removed, but they don't want any installed. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and uncheck that. And we're only going to be adding in some base cabinets. Um, but again, for the base cabinets, we need 16 linear feet of those. So we're just going to go ahead and adjust the part quantity there. We're just going to adjust this over to 16. And then we unchecked this part for the wall cabinets. And keep in mind, we're still in template mode here. We haven't added these parts to the estimate yet. We're still just getting this ready uh, to, all add, to add these parts all at once here in a moment. Uh, so next, I needed a new countertop and a backsplash, 17 linear feet of each. So let's see what we've got for that. So here is install laminate countertop. And it's got it at 13 linear feet. So we actually needed to adjust that to 17. Uh, but this is why it's important to read these part descriptions. Because here, let's take a look at this part description. Install laminate countertop. Um, and then down here at the bottom, it's saying 4-inch backsplash average. So a 4-inch backsplash is already included in the cost of the laminate countertop. So this kind of knocks out these two tasks here in the takeoff. So we just needed to make sure that was adjusted to 17 linear feet. And then that's all set to go. So next we have some flooring. I have uh, 81 square feet of cement board and then ceramic tile flooring that we're going to be installing as well. 81 square feet of each. So let's come back here into the template. We're going to scroll down to uh, floor coverings and then we're going to check what parts are in floor coverings. So same idea here. Again, very important to read these descriptions because we're looking at three different line items here in the template. Um, this one says labor to install flooring. It's going to be an adhesive grout and seal, no flooring materials included. So this is where it's really important to take a look at the description because you could get tripped up here because you're looking at labor to install flooring. We're looking at a material cost for the flooring install here. So you might think this is for the flooring itself, but it's actually not. The part is saying that this is the labor to install the flooring and the material cost that's included actually reflects this adhesive, this grout and this seal. So then below here, we're looking at two other items in the template, install cement board, and then we're looking at provide ceramic tile flooring. So this is going to be the material cost for our flooring materials. And then this labor cost here only includes the grout and the seal materials. So these three parts all account for just these two tasks here in my takeoff, but we just need to adjust my quantities at this point. So I'm clicking in, it's suggesting 83 square feet. I actually need 81. Uh, there's a little bit of difference in the flooring space here. So we're just going to adjust this to 81 square feet. So next I have some painting work to do. So I have um, paint walls, paint ceiling, and paint, board, paint baseboards with two coats of latex paint each. So we're going to start here with the paint walls, two coats. It's 255 square feet of paint walls. We're going to scroll down here in the template, see what's included for that. So here is paint wall, latex roll, two coats. 255 square feet. I have 111 square feet for the ceiling. And then I have paint baseboard at 28. I just need to adjust that to 27. Now, again, if it was going to be any other kind of application, if you're painting with a brush instead of a roll, for example, we would just uncheck these parts and find the relevant parts in the library after we've added the template. In this case, this is what I need for this project. So we're just going to leave that as is. So then I have some finalization work to do. I have two cubic yards of debris to dump, some cleanup, uh, as well as renting a dumpster here. So let's see what we've got. So nothing included for that in the template. And obviously, there wasn't any prep work included either. So this just gives us a starting point to the estimate. And then we're going to use this template to finish out the majority of the project. And then just to wrap everything up, we'll use parts from the library here. So at this point, um, it's a good idea to just go back through the template, read all the part descriptions, make sure everything is relevant to your project, and make sure you don't need to adjust any quantities. And then once everything looks good, we're just going to come down here and click Add Template. And that's going to copy and paste all of the parts in that template into our project here all at once. So now from here, we can make any other adjustments that we'd like. Um, so we're going to be doing a little bit of that. We're going to fine tune this project just a tad. Before we do that, I'd like to finish out the rest of this finalization. So I need to, um, I need to dump uh, around two cubic yards of debris. Uh, so let's go ahead and price that out. I'm going to go into browse part library here. A lot of cleanup and finalization work is going to be in your finalization category. So I'm going to jump down here to 37 project finalization. I'm going to use the middle dropdown to get more specific. Here we have load haul and dump debris. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that here. So what do we need? We need two, two cubic yards of debris removed. Now, this is another important concept to understand. So when we click load, haul, and dump debris here, we're seeing a variety of part descriptions that include a measurement. So in this case, it's saying 2.25 cubic yards. This part is 4.5. This is 6.75. Whenever you see an actual measurement included in the part, they're almost universally going to be priced by the piece. And what that essentially means is that you don't have to type in a cubic yardage. All you have to do is just use one quantity of that part to account for that measurement. Um, so when Whenever there's a range of measurements or there's just a measurement listed, that's almost always just going to be a cost that encompasses that entire cubic yardage, for example. So in this case, 2.25 cubic yards are accounted for in the price of one of these parts. So I don't need to type in my cubic yardage in this case. It's already kind of defined for me. And we're just adding in one of these and we're going to add that part in. So that should well cover my two cubic yards of debris removal. And then I have some cleanup, just some general cleanup, 111 square feet. So elsewhere in finalization, we're going to see cleaning labor. Um, oops, not that. We're actually wanting uh, general cleaning in this case. Excuse me. So we're going to go into general cleaning, and then I'm going to use my park groups here, and we're going to find kitchen or bath project. And again, here's this range of square footages. So it's not priced by the square foot. It's just giving you a total cost for up to these square footages here. And then down here at the bottom, we're seeing another part that says over 200 square feet. This is priced by the square foot. Um, for everything else here, so for example, I need 111 square feet of cleanup work. That's going to be accounted for in 100 to 150 here. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. The cost of 100 to 150 square feet of cleanup is reflected in quantity one of these parts. I'm going to go ahead and add the part. And the last thing I need is a dumpster. We're going to be renting a 10-yard dumpster. Here is a 10-cubic yard dumpster, and we're going to add the part. So that's everything in the takeoff, but we're not quite finished here because we had a couple of things we needed to do. Um, so number one, the refrigerator wall outlet. This was categorized in the template with my appliances, and I actually wanted that to be sorted with my electrical parts. So I'm going to come back into the project list. Again, I like to use the category column because it makes it easier to surf to different categories of parts and quickly find what I need. So I'm going to come down here to appliances. And then here is my part for refrigerator wall outlet. And again, I'd like this to be included with the electrical parts. I think that'll be less confusing for the homeowner on the document. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, 26 appliances right here. And I'm going to just switch this over to 25 electrical and save. And then it's going to indicate to me in blue where the part was moved. So we see it's now sorted with our electrical parts. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mark off that I completed that. And then the only other thing I need to do, we didn't add that average grade dishwasher that was included with the template. So we still need to add in a premium dishwasher here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to type in premium dishwasher. Here it is, provide and install premium dishwasher. I need one of those. Cost is a little bit above what they paid. They only paid $1,300. I'm just going to adjust that here and add the part into the project. Uh, so that's everything in the takeoff. Um, so as far as I added them to the project, and this should be the completed kitchen estimate, but we're still in. Um, so we still have a couple of things we want to account for. So number one, we want to take a look at our markup settings. Um, it's kind of defaulting here to 50%. This isn't a recommendation. You can kind of tack on your own percentage for material or labor or subcost case by case. Um, in this case, I am just going to leave it at 50% this here if we needed. Down here below each markup tool, it's going to tell us the dollar amount of markup included in each cost category. So it's tacking on uh, a little bit over six grand in material markup and uh, just a little shy of two grand in labor markup here. So up here at the top, we're going to be able to see the project total before markup. Then we're seeing the dollar amount of markup here in blue. And then here is the base bid cost. So this is the cost to my client. It's never going to show my client what the markup is. It's just going to roll that cost into the total cost of the project here. So with that all in mind, uh, we still need to do a couple of things here. Number one, we need to add in some sales tax. So we're going to come down here to miscellaneous items. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus. 
We're going to add in a new item for sales tax. So same idea here. It's just going to need a description and a value. So we're going to type in sales tax. And again, you can use this for um, tax. You can use this for discounts. You can use this for a profit margin. Any kind of extra percentage you want to tack on uh, to the project cost, you can set it up using this add line item feature here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and type in sales tax. We're going to say that's a 6% sales tax. And then I'm actually going to set up my percentage over here. We have a choice between a dollar amount or a percentage. I'm going to set this up as a percentage and I'm going to add in to this box right here, 6% sales tax. Um, just below, it's going to give us this drop down so we can choose where to calculate that from. We can do it based on the actual total before markup, based on the markup itself, or the total after markup is called your base bid. Uh, and then further down, we have options for material labor or sub cost, either with or without markup. In this case, we're just going to do actual total. It's going to show us the total value of the item down here. So we're seeing that's the uh, value of our tax item. Over here, there's going to be a couple of buttons. This is how you tell Clear Estimates where to put your tax item. So preliminary proposal, formal proposal, subcontractor report, or cost status report. Um, most of the time, you're using your formal proposal. So I just need to make sure this is checked for F. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save the item that's gonna tack on some sales tax to my project cost here. And we're nearing the end here of this estimate. The only thing is my client had reached out to me while this um, kind of the original discussions about this project were underway. My client reached out and they said, well, what would it cost me to just do the cabinet replacement with a new sink? Or I'm sorry, the, uh, the countertop replacement with a new sink. Um, so rather than go ahead with the full project cost, they were curious what it would cost them just to price out the countertop replacement with a new sink and forgo the rest of this work. Now, they're pretty sure they want to go ahead with this whole estimate, but they just wanted to see an option. So that's what I'm going to do with the alternates tool down here is we're going to show our client an option for a countertop replacement um, without including that in the cost. And we're going to do that using this alternates tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus in the alternates tool. That's going to take us to a new page. You're going to see this looks just like the main projects page, um, but we, we're going to be able to see we're in an alternate. It's going to tell us we're in an alternate. And what this is, is it's just a subsection of the estimate that's not attached to the original project cost. Um, so I created my alternate. I'm going to go ahead and retitle this. I'm going to call this uh, countertop replacement with sink. And then down below, you'll see it looks just like the main projects page. We're going to add parts to the alternate the same exact way. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to save a little time here. I'm going to use one of the templates for uh, countertop replacement that are already included. So I'm going to come down here to kitchens and then we're going to scroll down in this category list here. We have countertop replacement, a whole bunch of different countertop replacement templates here for you. Uh, in this case, we're going to go solid surface with integral sink. If I recall correctly, that's going to be 17 linear feet. We're going to calculate that out. Now, if you're really estimating this project, you'd be going through all of these parts in this template. Make sure it matches up with the work you need. In this case, we're just going to save a little time here. We're just going to add the template as is. It's going to add it right to this alternate for us. And this will just allow us to show what the cost would be to the client on the um, oh, just for the countertop replacement here on the proposal. Um, so now it's time to go ahead and go back to the main project. We're going to do that using this back to main project button up here in the top left. That's going to take us back to the main projects page. And let's take another look at this proposal. We're going to go view report and print to PDF. Um, and then what we're going to do at this point is just kind of go over the, the contract, make sure everything looks good. We're going to look at the proposal itself, look at all the items, see if there is any last minute adjustments we want to make before we send this out. Um, so always a good idea just to preview the proposal prior to sending it out to your client. That way you're both on the same page as to what it says and what it describes here. So here's the formal proposal. Still a few things I want to adjust here. So I want to add in my customer's address. And then also this is all just example legal language. So I want to add in my own contract here. Uh, so let's really quick just do that. We're going to come back into the projects page. Now to add my customer's address here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this customers tool up in the top left. It's going to take us right to John homeowner. We're going to go ahead and click edit and we're going to edit his information. So we're going to be able to add in his street address. So we'll just say it's 123 Main Street. He's in Ann Arbor. 104. I'm also going to add in a phone number for him. He could be reached at 555 111 2222. So we're going to go ahead and save the changes there and head back to the projects page. 
Uh, and again, I also wanted to adjust this contract lingo. So we're going to come back into the projects page. All of your contract language, uh, which is referred to as boilerplate in the system, is going to be found here in the reports tool. So we're going to click over to reports. You'll see it looks like a clipboard. That's going to take us right to the boilerplate page. Um, and then what we need to do here is just scroll down to the bottom left and you're going to see this little gray box that says boilerplate information. And in this box is going to be a series of titles for different contracts. So these are just different headers. And as we click these uh, titles, we can see that the text within populates over here on the right side. So we're actually going to use these text boxes over here on the right side to adjust the language. Now, when I'm looking at this proposal, I'm seeing this language here, general conditions example. And I'm seeing intro versus outro boilerplate here. Um, and when I'm looking at the boilerplate tool, I know it's going to be this header and this header. And the reason I know that is because F is checked for both of these headers. Um, so when we're looking at the proposal, we can see this is the formal proposal. This is the default output of clear estimates. Uh, but you have some other proposal options as well in the system. Um, so that's what these checkboxes are. They're just different report settings. Um, this is essentially how you're going to tell clear estimates where to put your contract language. So in this case, we have this language and this language, kind of just these sample agreements already included on the proposal. We're going to go ahead and uncheck those because we don't need them. And then we're going to add in our own. We're going to do that by clicking Add Heading down here at the bottom. This is going to create a blank heading for us. So we're going to click into that. I'm going to give this a title. I'm just going to say General Agreement. And then using this text box, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in some language that I went over with my attorney here. So uh, here in my list of files, I do have my contract that I went over with my lawyer. Everything looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to come back into clear estimates and just paste this text into this text box. And then, of course, you can also type into this box if you need. And there's a variety of format settings here as well. Uh, everything looks good there. All I need to do is just go ahead and click the F column to make sure that this appears at the top of my formal proposal. And if I wanted it at the bottom, we can set it up as an outro boilerplate. There is a section for intro, which is anything before your project contents. And outro is anything afterwards, so things like your acceptance of um, proposal signature box here is going to be in the outro, uh, your own signature line, same thing. Um, in this case, we're just going to keep this at the top of the agreement. All right, so with all that in mind, let's go ahead and take one more look at this proposal. So we're going to head back to projects. We're going to go up to view report and print to PDF. And we're going to print this document one more time here and just take a look at how everything looks. Uh, and if everything does look good, then we should be all set to email the, the proposal right to our client. So we're going to be able to do that from right within the software. Um, it's pretty easy to do it. So we're going to take a look at that in just a second here. Uh, so we'll give this a second to populate. And here is that formal proposal. Now I've got my customer's address included as well as his phone number. I have my contract language that's specific to my company up here at the top. And then we have the full project contents here. And you can see that Clear Estimates has printed out a professional sentence of text for each of the tasks in my project. So all we did was find these items, define the quantities, and then add them to the estimate. And Clear Estimates is going to do the rest here and populate the actual agreement. Um, and then down here at the bottom, we're going to see our total project cost. It's going to itemize the sales tax for us right here and give us a total project cost. And then just below that, we're looking at that option. So they were curious what it would cost them uh, just to replace the countertop and add a new sink uh, if they don't want to go ahead with this total project. So down here is my alternate, and this is the option to show them. And here is the cost. Uh, so this is not included in this project cost. So it's just a great way you can show a handful of options. If you had a couple of different options or selections you wanted to present to the client, you could just set them up each as their own alternate. And it's just a quick way to show them some options on the proposal. So everything looks good with this particular estimate. I'm going to go ahead and send this off to my client. Now, keep in mind, we even though we were explaining every step of the process here, you can see how quickly we were able to really put that estimate together um, and have this out the door in such a little amount of time here. Um, so at this point, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and send this agreement to my client. I'm going to do that using send to customer. We're going to go send report to customer. That's going to pull up this little preview of the email it's going to send them. So if you want to click into this body of this email and adjust the language, you can. But you might be tempted to change this customer name in bracket or this company name in bracket to your own customer's name or your own company name. But you actually don't have to. It's actually going to automatically populate those details. So it's going to say your customer's name automatically. It's going to say your company name automatically. And if you want to see what that looks like, just go ahead and erase the to email up here and change it to your own email address and send yourself a copy of the proposal. 
are really easy to do. Um, and then even when you're sending it to the homeowner, you can also send yourself a copy just so you can see what that looks like. And so that about covers the process. So at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to our Q&A section. And we're just going to go ahead and take a look at the audience chat and see if there are any questions about the presentation today. So I'm not seeing any questions coming in at all. Uh, any questions from the audience that you'd like to uh, cover before we jump off here? All right, well, if you do have any questions that come to mind, just keep in mind, um, you can reach us a few ways. Chiefly, when you're working in the software, there's gonna be this blue chat button down here in the bottom right. So just go ahead and click um, this blue chat button. You can send us a message. We're available nine to five Eastern time, Monday through Friday. And you can also reach us via phone or email. Uh, feel free to reach out. If you do have any questions, we'd love to get in touch with you, uh, address any questions that you might have. Wanna thank everyone so much for joining in on the presentation today.